Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get up and running with Gmail here in 2016. To get started with Gmail you need to have a Google account so you can either sign up for a Google account when you first go to gmail.com or you can log in with an existing account. Once you log in to a Google account and go to gmail.com you'll be brought to the screen that I'm at right now which is your Gmail inbox. So we're just going to kind of jump right in and start going over the different features of Gmail. I just want to let you know that you can pause or rewind this video at any time if you are following along and need to look at something in your account so don't be afraid to do that. So when we first go to Gmail and we log in we are brought to our inbox and we can tell we're in our inbox because if you look at the left side of my screen the inbox is currently highlighted in red. Now we also have some other areas of Gmail over here on the left as well. Uh, we have the starred area which is where emails that have been starred will be located so we can click on the star icon next to an email which is kind of just like flagging it as an important email so that maybe as emails come in during the day we can star the important ones and then later on we can click on the starred section and it will only show emails that have had a star added to them. So it's just a nice way to flag emails here in Gmail. Sent mail is where all of your sent messages will go so if you sent a message you forget what you said you can go over to sent mail and check it out. Drafts is where emails that have been composed but not yet sent will be kept and Gmail actually saves emails as you compose them so if you're composing an email and all of a sudden your computer dies, shuts off, if you log back in and go into your drafts section of Gmail the email you were composing should be there pretty much where you left it off so that's a really nice feature. We obviously have spam here as well. Uh, before I met, talk about spam and, and some of these other areas here, uh, you probably don't have this Google section. Let me delete that for now. Uh, you may not have all of the links on your Gmail that I have up here, and you might have to click on this more drop down on the left side, and you'll see some other links here. And I recommend dragging a lot of these up to the top so we can click and drag all mail up to the top so that it's always shown. That's a good one to have up there, maybe even trash and also important if you want to use the Gmail important feature. Uh, so move some of those up there, but uh, like I said, here's spam. Uh, emails that are marked as spam will go into that folder. You can also mark an email as spam, which I'll talk about later on in the video. And then future emails from that email address will automatically go into the spam folder. Emails in the spam folder will be deleted after 30 days. And that goes the same for trash. When you delete an email here in Gmail after 30 days, that email will be permanently deleted. So make sure that you want to delete an email before you actually do it. Uh, so that you don't uh, go back in 31 days and realize that you can't find that email. So now that we've talked a little bit about these links over here on the left, let's just talk about composing an email here in Gmail. So if I click on this big red compose button at the top left, I can start creating a new email. You can see we've got our basic email fields here. We have the to field, the subject, and then the body of the email. So we could uh, send an email to webmaster at ansonalex.com. The first time you enter an email address, Google will remember it. So if you send multiple emails to the same address, you won't have to type out the full address uh, after you've already done it once. It will automatically be saved for you. So that's kind of a nice feature as well. If you want a carbon copy or blind carbon copy of somebody, you can click on the CC field or the BCC field over here to the right. And then you could enter the email addresses for your carbon copy or your blind carbon copy. Obviously you can enter the subject, we can just call this test email, and then down here at the bottom we can compose the body of our, our email. Here is the test email I said I would send. Now down here at the bottom of this email window we have a number of other different options uh, for us to format the text and just the style of our email here in Gmail. So uh, the first button down here next to send is the formatting options button, which gives us all of these different options. So we can change the text size, bold, italics, underline. You can change the font over here to the left. Uh, you can change the color. You can change your alignment. So you've got your left, center, and right align. You can make numbered lists, bulleted lists. You can change your indents, add quotes, and then you can remove all formatting if you'd like. Pretty standard uh, for most of your word processing applications. We also can attach files here in Gmail by clicking on the attach files button and then it would ask us to upload a file from our computer. We can also drag files into Gmail. So if I wanted to attach a file to this email, I could simply drag a file into this window if I wanted to. Uh, we can attach files using Google Drive. Uh, we can send and receive money. That, that's a whole different video, if, uh, but you can use Google Wallet to send and receive money through Gmail nowadays. You can insert photos, you can insert links, and then of course we have 
emojis. So you can insert emojis here into Gmail. If you don't like the email that you're composing, you can click on the trash button to discard it. And you'll notice that it says that this email has already been saved. As I mentioned earlier, Gmail saves drafts as you compose them. So when we're ready, we could just hit the send button to send off this email. If you don't like composing in such a small window, you can click on the arrow icon up here at the top right of this uh, compose window and it will make it bigger for you. But I will say it is nice to have this small window sometimes because you can actually go through your email while you're composing. So if you need some information that's in one of the emails in your account, you could go in and you could click on it, access the email. Uh, I could shrink this down if I wanted to so I could see the whole email. Uh, then I could bring it back up. So that's a nice feature of Gmail as well. Uh, so when I'm ready, I could just hit send and that email has now been sent. So that's how to send an email here in Gmail. Let's go back to the inbox and talk about receiving emails and looking at emails. So you'll notice that I opened up this one email here in Gmail and now in my inbox this email is no longer bold. So what that means is that unread messages are denoted by bold here in your Gmail inbox and read messages will no longer be bold. I do want to mention we're not seeing it in my inbox right now but Gmail does have what's called threaded messages. So if you have a conversation with somebody uh, and you're sending emails back and forth, all of those emails will be grouped into one, what looks like one email here in Gmail. Now I think that's a great feature because I can always quickly look back and see what was said earlier on in the conversation, but some people don't like that feature. So I want to mention that you can change that feature by going up here to your Gmail settings by clicking on the gear icon, then going into your settings, and then from within settings, uh, if you look down in this general section here, you'll notice that there's a section labeled conversation view. And uh, what we can do is we can turn conversation view off and then go down to the bottom and save our changes. And now we will no longer have threaded emails here in Gmail. So I know some of you want to turn that off. So that's how you can do that here in Gmail. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these emails again. We'll take a look at this test document email. This was just an email that I sent to myself with an attachment. So I just want to mention that uh, when you are receiving emails and working with emails, obviously you can click to open them up. Down here at the bottom you could reply to the email or forward it. I can hover over an attachment here in Gmail and just click the downward facing arrow button to download that email. I could also save it to Google Drive if you use that. And we could edit the document with Google Docs if you use Google Docs. If you're looking for some more options uh, when working with emails, you can click on the drop down menu up here at the top right. And you can see this is where you could say print the message. Um, or you could you know, translate it, uh, some different things like that. You also have a number of options up here at the top to work with your email. So the first option is to archive an email. And I just want to hold on to that thought for one minute because I'm going to talk about that at the end here, exactly what archiving is here in Gmail. But this is where we could do an archive and we'll learn what that is in a second. The second button is how you can report an email as spam so it will get sent to your spam folder and future emails from that email address will also be automatically sent to your spam folder. The third button is obviously where you can delete the email. And then the next two buttons deal with organizing your email. So we can either move this email to a, a particular label here in Gmail, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, or we could simply label the email without moving it. And I'll explain the difference. Um, I'm actually going to talk about archiving emails and organizing emails at the same time to make things a little bit easier. So let's go back to our inbox to start that conversation. So we have uh, a feature which is called labels here in Gmail, which is essentially uh, very similar to how folders work in other email systems. So when we get an email, let's say we have this email that I already looked at called test document. And let's say we want to file that email away to use later on. What we need to do is we need to add a label to the email. So I can either click the checkbox next to the email or I can actually open up the email. And then I can go up here to the move to section or the label section. Now here's what the difference is. This email is currently in my inbox. We know that because we found it in my inbox. If we look up here at the top we have this little inbox tag. Now if I want to keep this email in my inbox but also give it a label, I can do that by going up here to the label drop down and choosing a label to give this email. I could also create a new label if I don't like one of the default options that Gmail gives me. So I'll create a new label and I'll just call it test. Now we can create a hierarchy of labels if we'd like as well. I'm not going to go in too much detail about that in this video, but I think you could probably see how that would work from this screen here. But for now we're just going to create a top level label. So I'm going to call it test. I'm going to click create. 
Now you'll notice up here at the top, I now have two tags on this email. I have the inbox tag or label, and then I have the test label. So that means if I click on inbox, I'm going to see this email. And if I go over here, and you'll notice I now have this label on the left side of my Gmail called test. If I click on the test label, I'll also have this email. Now we achieved that by opening up the email and just going up to the label dropdown and giving it a label. If I had gone up, let's unlabel this email, so it's just in our inbox now. It's not in the test label, and we can see that if we go to test, it's no longer there. So I've got this email, and let's say I want to label it and I want to take it out of my inbox at the same time. I can do that by going to the move to drop down. And now if I choose test, it's going to take it out of my inbox. You can see it's no longer in my inbox, but it's over here in the test label. Now essentially what we did is we labeled an email and archived it at the same time. All archiving is in Gmail is removing an email from your inbox. So I have this email right here that I've already looked at in my inbox. Now let's say I want to move this email out of my inbox. I don't want to delete it and I don't necessarily need to label it. If I want to find this later on I can search for it. So all I need to do is click on this archive button. So that email no longer appears in my inbox. It isn't in any of my labels but if I go to all mail we're going to see that email. So now I get a bunch of Facebook spam on this account. Uh, people creating accounts with my email address. So those are all these messages. But that email is somewhere in the all mail folder here in Gmail. Now we might have trouble finding it because we didn't give it a label and we have a, a number of other emails here in our all mail folder. But what we could do is we could search for that email. So I could go up here to the top and I could just search for Gmail, hit enter, and uh, well, all these Facebook emails come up when we search Gmail as well because there's an email address in there. So let's try searching Google because I think I had Google in that email. So there we go. So now I searched Google and here's that email. We can see it doesn't have the inbox tag, it doesn't have the test tag, but it is still in our email account. So that's up to you uh, how you want to manage your email, if you want to create a whole bunch of labels or if you just want to archive emails and then search for them. The search is pretty powerful here in Gmail. Uh, Go figure, it's made by Google, right? Now it will search the entirety of your email. So you could, if you're searching for a particular email, you could search for the recipient of the email, the sender of the email, the subject of the email, or even the content within the email. Now, when I first started using Gmail, I created a bunch of labels and I said, okay, great, I'm going to use these like folders and uh, I'll organize all of my emails. And I still do use a lot of those labels, but I also use the search probably just as much, if not more. A lot of emails I just archive and when I need that particular email later on, I just think of something within the email and I search for it. Uh, so that has become a little bit more efficient for me than actually spending the time to organize all of my emails and then go into those folders or labels and find the particular email. Uh, so that's just a tip, but it is up to you how you'd like to manage your Gmail account. So let's go back to the inbox now. And just to summarize what we just went over is we basically went over email organization. So we can click to open up an email to add a label to this email. We can go up here to the top drop down and add a particular label. If we do it from this menu right here, it's going to add the label and it's going to stay in our inbox. If we do it from the folder drop down, it will add the label and it will move it out of our inbox. So that's how we can organize emails here in Gmail. Now, before I finish up this video, I do want to talk about just a couple more things, and they basically deal with some Gmail settings. So one thing that we're going to change is we're going to change how our inbox is structured here in Gmail in terms of having separate inboxes. I'm not sure if you've noticed throughout the video thus far, but in our Gmail account, we actually have multiple inboxes. So I have a primary inbox, a social inbox, and a promotions inbox. And by default, this is how your Gmail account is set up. And Google will send emails to those particular inboxes based on where they think they should go. Now, this is a relatively new feature. It's been around for a few years. Uh, some people are using it and love it, and other people don't like it so much. I actually don't use this feature too much. So I'm going to show you how you can turn that off, and I'm also going to show you how you can set up a Gmail signature. So to access our settings again, we need to go to the top right corner of Gmail and click on the Settings drop-down. From here, we're going to click on Settings. Now to change how our inboxes are set up, we can click on the Inbox tab up here at the top. And you'll notice that right now our inbox type is default and we have some multiple categories selected down here at the bottom. So all we need to do is go down here to categories and just uncheck social and uncheck promotions. So then we can go down to the bottom and click save changes and you'll notice that in my inbox I have all these uh, social media emails that just came in because we're no longer using separate inboxes. We're using one inbox which you're probably used to if you're coming from a 
email service like Hotmail or Yahoo. Uh, so now I'd have to go through and get rid of all these Facebook spam that I've gotten. Uh, but I can do that at another, at another time. So let's go back into our settings and talk about two more things. Uh, the first one is your Gmail signature. That's pretty important. So when you go to your settings, uh, the first tab you're in is the general tab. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that there is a section for a signature here in Gmail. So what we want to do is we want to click on the radio dial below no signature because we want to use a signature. And then we can go ahead and create our signature. So I could just do Anson Alexander, AnsonAlex.com. I could add a phone number if I wanted to. You can modify the font, all of the styles of the text, everything. Make it however you want to make it. Then go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and click on Save Changes. Now when we go to compose a new email, you'll notice that our signature is down here in the bottom. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is about the Labs feature here in Gmail. So I'm going to go back to the Gmail settings by clicking on the drop down and clicking on settings. And now I'm going to look for the tab up here at the top labeled labs. What Gmail labs are is they're kind of add-ons for your Gmail account for you to change certain features. Some are more useful than others, but it's definitely a good idea to go through some of these labs, take a look at them and see which ones you may be able to use. I'll just scroll down here and talk about a few that I use. The first one is canned responses, so a lot of you might already know what that is based on the name. And what that is is you can actually create responses that you're going to use over and over again so that when um, you go to respond to an email that you're going to use one of those canned responses, you can save your response and then you can just click on that particular response to send it. So be useful for like order confirmations if you're not using an ERP system or a CMS system that automatically sends an order confirmation but you're taking orders by email when somebody sends you an order you could send back a confirmation using a canned response so you don't have to type it out every time uh, so that's definitely a useful feature to check out and if we scroll down here uh, we have a few others we can enable a mark is red button so when we're looking at emails instead of having to uh, open up the email to mark it as red we can just click the checkbox next to the email and and then click on the mark as red button to have it marked as red so we don't actually have to open it up. There's a few others. There's one that takes the uh, two dots out of your signature. I'm not sure if you guys noticed but when I composed an email in Gmail after adding a signature I have these two little dots here and you might have to uh, dig a little bit for that particular lab but I'm pretty sure that there is a lab that will take out those two dots. I didn't see it in here uh, the first time I went through but I'm pretty sure there is one in here so you might want to look for that one as well so that's pretty much it for Gmail I hope you found this video helpful if you did I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube and if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel that's all I have for you for now this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com